For many of us, it seems like we grew up with Dodger Stadium entertaining baseball fans, but take away the bleachers, take away the Dodger dogs, take away the championship banners, take all that away, and there were homes there. Long before it was ever time for Dodger baseball, there were homes, schools, churches, and families, and then there weren't. Who's on first? Who's on first? Let me tell you. <laughs> Tom LeBond right. loves a good laugh. LeBond's the longtime former LA City Councilman and even longer time LA Dodgers fan. Nothing like the Los Angeles Dodgers, and we're so fortunate. You know, they came out here from Brooklyn and uh, uh, at a time when professional sports was changing. You know, the Rams had come out here from Cleveland, and then uh, the Dodgers came out here west, first major league team to come this far west. It was the spring of 1958, the mayor of Los Angeles at the time, Norris Polson. Now Los Angeles is major league in every sense of the word. I'm certain that our citizens join me in expressing appreciation to Walter O'Malley for his show of confidence in Los Angeles and its future. Are you a Dodger fan? Not particularly. Before there was Dodger Stadium, there was Chavez Ravine. That's where Carol Hackus grew up. When Carol was just nine, her family's property and others like Eddie Centillion were taken by eminent domain. At the time, the plan was to build a big new public housing project. This was a watering hole right where we're at right now. There were three neighborhoods here that had homes, a church, a school, and a lot of anger over the idea of a developer snatching up property. Neighborhood women who lived in the area protested with a sit-in at City Hall. But at the height of McCarthyism, the housing project hit a snag when the developer of the project refused to answer if he was a communist when asked by the House on American Activities Committee. The project may have been dead, but the damage was already done. For Hackus and others, their homes, the school, the church, and other buildings had already been taken, and homeowners like Santian's family had to leave. They got evicted. Uh, they were offered, I believe, maybe, I think it was like $7,000 or something like that. It was horrible. It really was awful. I mean, it's like everybody, th there were tears and, and, and uh, the, 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 we had gone through so much in order to survive. Like most of those residents came over in the teens and 20s and then they had to survive the depression. And uh, these Mexicans couldn't stand in bread lines because at the same time, there were laws that were, that because of the depression, there were mass deportations of Mexicans going on. Suddenly this area is open, and when the Dodgers were first approached in 1953 by Kenny Hahn and Roz Wyman, there's absolutely no interest on the part of the Dodgers. No interest in Chavez Ravine to build a stadium, though interest is building in a possible move to Los Angeles when Brooklyn didn't come forth with a new stadium for the Dodgers. But Dodger team historian Mark Langell says that would change when Dodger owner Walter O'Malley gave up on a new ballpark in Brooklyn and found out that the eminent domain land at Chavez Ravine, land which was originally supposed to be a public housing project, would be a good spot for a stadium. And in years to come, that would be proven true. It was vital for it to be here because of the freeway access. Yes, there was displacement to build some of our freeway system. Yes, there was displacement now to build some of our rail system. But look at this place right here. And it's one of the monuments, not just for our city, but for the world of stadiums. That baseball monument opened for the first time with the 1962 Dodgers and an umpire screaming, play ball. For Eddie Santian, he doesn't know how it all happened, but like his daddy agrees, it wasn't the Dodgers' fault. His thing was never against the Dodgers. His thing was the way the process went. Which is why in the late 70s, his dad started an annual reunion of Chavez Ravine displaced families. Every year, it's the third Saturday in July. Still though, you won't find Carol Hawkins at a game. Remember, she's not a Dodger fan. Because of what happened? Yes. That's affected your thinking? Completely. But for Eddie. I like the Dodgers. I don't have anything against them. They're, they're a home team. I, I have nothing against them. Although the memories of families being evicted to make way for Major League Baseball has never gone away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for tonight's ceremonial first pitch. Another story from our KTTV archives. I'm Hal Eisner, Fox 11 News.